Good day, hello, well, welcome back to Versus. This one is not going to be draft. As you can see, there are many more cards in each player's deck. We're going to be playing Canlander today. Canadian Highlander, as it's called, is a 100 card singleton format. It's a competitive 1v1 format, uses the vintage ban list, and also uses a points list. That is pretty much the extent of my knowledge on Canadian Highlander and for that reason I've invited Kieran back <laughs> again because I know next to nothing about Constructed and even less about Canlander. So Kieran, hi and thanks for joining us again. Hi there. Um, so yeah, Canlander is actually one of my preferred formats. Um, really enjoy it. Like Nathan said, uh, singleton format, 1v1, 20 life, and it uses a point system as opposed to a ban list, where cards are pointed at a certain amount and you are allowed a maximum of 10 points within your deck. Um, so here we go, straight away we get to see one of the pointed cards, Mox Emerald, 3 points. Um, this is proxy friendly, as you can tell, um, because not everyone has Mox Emeralds lying around. And I guess there's an important point there to, to, to interject with that this is this is an unsanctioned event. It's com completely community run. Um, yes. And therefore, yes. this is proxy friendly. So let's get into the game. So uh, quick start here from uh, Jeffro. We're starting off with uh, three mana available to him on turn two with uh, Mox Emerald planes into I can't remember the name of the card but it's look at the top four put one uh, permanent into your hand the rest into the bin and create a spawn token and then a slow start from the, the doomsday player with just a uh, uh, triome there that's, that's it Fiend's tower so you ha having played Canlander a fair amount in our weekly Canlander events. Have you played against these decks? Are you familiar with them? Uh, yeah, so um, Jeffro, the, the, the deck on the, the left is a uh, Absan pile, uh, aims to just outvalue you, and the Doomsday deck on the right is, uh, well, it's Doomsday and Breach, two, uh, two combos shoved into the same deck, and it We'll see if it manages to get its combo off. Nice one. I know uh, I know Doomsday because I used to play Commander and Doomsday was one of my potential win conditions in my Yuriko Commander deck, so I'm aware of the card at least. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, Underwood Breach. Relatively new card. Probably can't say that anymore. It's probably a few years old at this point. <laughs> but when that one was printed, it uh, came out and completely yeah. changed how a lot of decks worked. Um, basically a better, more improved version of Past in Flames. Uh, right, so we got another land for Jeffro into a Sator Wayfinder, so he's getting a look at the top four. Pick a land and put it into his hand. Uh, some nice cards there, potentially take the Wasteland. Uh, one of the ways to beat the Doomsday Breach deck if you're not on hard counters, uh, which Jeffrey won't be, as he's not playing blue, is to try and attack the lands. I guess this Rafine's Tower is prime target. Yeah. Oh, Birthing Ritual as well, that's quite nice, so... Um, well, this is a it's... this is a, a relatively new one. Yep, uh, from MH3. Oh. So, we get to... It would get to look at the top seven cards, pick a card that's uh, CMC1 more then the creature you control one more or less that's right yeah so you... <laughs> it can't be any more than one more yeah yes but it can be less <laughs> uh, so it's kind of a fixed uh, birthing pod because uh, it's only happens once it's only in the end step whereas birthing pod uh, being the artifact you could essentially chain it off in one turn and win the game uh, but uh, we have killed the Sati Wayfinder, so the perfect ritual will not trigger. Uh, that is an enlightened tutor, so we're going to probably go search for. Okay, Black Lotus. That oh, is one of the I, pointed I, cards. I, I recognise that one. Yeah, so that one is uh, seven points. So I imagine 
looking at this then, the Doomsday Breach deck, the points are probably going to be Black Lotus on 7 and Underworld Breach on 3, and that'll be all 10 points. Yeah, you'd, um, you'd think that Underworld Breach was in the deck, considering the deck name. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we can put the Black Lotus on top, draw the Black Lotus, and I'd be quite worried if I was in Jeffro's situation here. Um, as I believe there's only a few cards needed to combo off at this point. Uh, what is that? I was about to say we don't have Doomsday yet though, do we? But now we do. Uh, it's not needed. Um, if we're... Oh, oh, we are going for Doomsday. Um, so I'm not as up to date with the Doomsday line as I am with the Underwood Breach line. Um, uh, I would then like to brainstorm. So it'll be interesting to see that one in action. We get to see Brainstorm happen. Look at these go, oh, aren't these funny? Sure. Black Lotus Doomsday? Yeah. Yep. So we're going to get to see Doomsday happen straight away, pretty much. So this uh, one, we get we get search your library and graveyard for five cards and turn those five cards into your new library and exile everything else. Yep. But then uh, you, 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 you lose a load of life as well. Yes, you also lose half your life. <laughs> Round it up. Yeah, so Alice is down to eight now. Yeah. I guess uh, this is probably the most difficult decision to make in for Alice now as she's finding which five cards to choose. Although from this situation, I, su I suspect it is fairly scripted. Um, yeah, so I, I think uh, it's usually draw spell, some sort of way of generating mana, and then a Fassa's Oracle to uh, win the game. But Fassa's uh, Oracle is pointed, right? Fassa's Oracle is pointed, seven points. So probably going to go for a Jace Wielder of Mysteries instead. Uh, an uptick activation. Right, that makes sense. Um, is there is anything? Place. Is there anything that you do here to try to protect yourself from any interaction to stop the combo from going off? Because I, I remember Doomsday being quite glass cannony. Uh, mm, silence. Uh, okay, so we are just passing the game turn back. So Jeffrey's got one turn here to probably win the game. Um, Opponent is on 8 life. Um, but no board presence at the moment. No board presence, no. So let's see what they can do. Um, another thing is, is uh, Jeffro will play the game out. He's not likely to concede. Um, and if you play against them, uh, it makes it very stressful when you think you've won. But the <laughs> okay. opponent's not conceding. And you have to double... Uh, you, you just have that that doubt in your mind that they might actually have something. I like it. I, I do I do similar in draft. Um, in I, I I will keep going longer than most will. Um, just to make people second guess. But I suppose in that one it's whether to attack with an extra creature, whereas this one it's actually firing off a glass cannon combo. Actually looked at Jeffrey's hand. It looks like he's. Not got anything okay. at all. Uh, so I don't know what could be hit here. Is there is there removal? Uh, I guess this is a creature that needs to be hit. But is there is there potential removal in hand that can deal with the Not combo as it's going off? I think okay. I saw Stoneforge Mystic, Palace Jailer. Um, so two creatures that don't really do anything. Um, so we have found something to put into play, a Knight of Autumn. <laughs> and Jethro's decided to gain four life, which is, as I, yes. I, I, I'm not an expert, but I don't think Alice cares. Probably not. And as you can see, uh, so, uh, yeah, cats There's your the protection. Now with this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so probably gonna just sack those off. Play Jace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, double checks that. Oh, this that's the March. Um, just checking that March doesn't target Planeswalkers because yes. if if you do get to destroy Jace with that trigger on the stack, 
you lose, right? Yeah, you would lose. So, the so. Thing about Doomsday is that Doomsday is what's happening next. So yeah, yeah. so we've seen the the Doomsday line there. Um, that's, that's game one. So, yeah. Like I say, I think this is a very difficult matchup for the Absan deck. There's not much interaction. Um, I think the main way to deal with Doomsday or Breach is by having instant speed interaction, and sometimes that's not enough. Um, so I, I, if I'm Jeffro in this seat, I'm on the play. I want a really aggressive hand, uh, potentially if you've got any hand disruption, like Fort Seizes, uh, Inquisitions, Kozilex, uh, just ways to uh, disrupt uh, Alice here early that's on. That's how you do it, isn't it? It's target hand disrupt disruption. Yeah. They've just tutored for Doomsday, and you just you make them exile it. Yeah. Uh, and then they go for Plan B uh, with the Underworld <laughs> Breach line instead. So uh, it's kind of, you kind of have to get there. So yeah, there's a lot of requirements here uh, for Jeffrey to to win. Oh, <laughs> so that's um, a very aggressive start. That's what you want to see. Uh, free power on the the board on turn one. Uh, potentially a planeswalker if it gets flipped that will generate a lot of oh value. Oh my word. Okay. So, uh... And that's why that these cards a, are pointed. <laughs> that is a double mock start with a Birds of Paradise. So we're looking at four mana next turn. And, uh... We're just going to start it off with a, a tap plan, surveil a card, put it in the bin, and pass the turn back. Yikes. Uh, that was so explosive. Looking, yeah, but looking at Jeffrey's hand, it doesn't look like there's much else following it up. Potentially an abrupt decay. Um, and I think it was abrupt decay in a land. To what extent does Jethro need birthing to go to? To go, I, I guess. D I guess with the it, damage with small creatures is potentially how you get there. Yeah. Um, so I don't think birthing rituals that important in, in regards to the deck. Okay. Uh, it's just uh, a value option. Um, but oh, this is quite nice. Ajani. You get to flip your Ajani, get a get the cat back that you've just lost. It's funny casting that spell when opponent doesn't even have a creature on board. <laughs> okay, scavenger news as well. So we got we got four power on the board again now. Uh, Moon Silver Key. Uh, so just a search for um, Black Lotus or Lotus Petal, I imagine, with that. So quite a slow start here for Alice. Uh, very useful card to fetch into here. A Surveil Land basically giving you, an, uh, if you count it in a way, an extra draw step. Let's you look at the card before you draw it. Decide if you want it or not. If you bin it, you you basically draw on a card for free. Uh, so let's see what we pick. So staying on top, so you don't get the full value, but it still feels good knowing that the card on top of your deck is something you want to draw. So four damage in now, down to 13. Really want to see another threat deployed to the board here, just... Oh, that's, that's, that's a, nice a nice one. one. <laughs> that's gonna deal with the um, the way to search the Black Lotus. Uh, it's two more damage on the board as well, and let's uh, activate Johnny to make another two one as well. Do you know what? As as a pretty much only a limited player, it is quite nice that I recognise or know how the vast majority of these cards work. And maybe it's just because of power creep and the fact that so many of the more recent cards are the ones that people go for. Um, as well as a combination of when you're playing Commander, even in years gone by. Birds of Paradise, Scavenging Ooze, they're all stars. Yeah, so Birds of Paradise been around since Alpha. Probably still one of the better mana dorks. Possibly being slightly power crept by Delighted Halfling. Um, but, yeah. Not, not quite fully power crept yet. 
I guess um, I was I was fully expecting to be watching this video with you and not not knowing what any of the cards do. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> feeling a little but, bit better about myself as a Magic player. <laughs> like, like you pointed out as well, a lot of the the newer cards. So if we look at the board, the the lands in play are either uh, the dual lands, so back from the beginning of Magic, or surveil lands. Exile. Um, there are Moxes in play, which again from the beginning of Magic. I don't. There's quite a few. Uh, recent cards, so... I don't know this one, though. Uh, so this is a fog, basically. It draws a card. No spells. No spells. Ah, okay. Interesting wording on this one, because it's the old wording, right? So it says, until end of turn, target player can't play instants, interrupt sorceries, or abilities requiring an activation cost. Now, I, I think... Am I right in saying that that's all been changed to being... to meaning non... Not not mana activations, not mana abilities. Uh, yes. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. So the the gathering text on the card now is until end of turn, target player can't cast instant sorcery spells, and the player can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. Uh, I mean, it's not. It doesn't help that much in this situation, right? This is going to be a fair, enough damage that. Alice is in trouble. So I think it's going to stop the the ooze from activating. It'll stop a Jani from activating. So doesn't quite get to add anything to the board this turn. Doesn't have any creatures to play um, because it does only stop instants and sorceries. So if you have any artifacts, creatures, uh, you could deploy them. But that was enough. Uh, quite an aggressive start there. Um, when you start on a double mock start, it's pretty hard to lose that game, usually. <laughs> um, it's almost as good as starting with uh, Mana Crypt, which is pointed in this format as well, but it's another one where... Man Mana uh, Crypt, Soul Ring. <laughs> yeah. Cards like that uh, tend to take over the game very, very quickly. But Right, so here's a question for you. As a as, as I've a self-professed... Uh, limited player if i were to get into canlander are there specific archetypes or decks that people want to be going for as a starting out if i wanted to get into the format well i think um because it's not got a massive following i don't think the format's solved i think there are archetypes you could definitely choose to play on so like uh, there's doomsday uh, absan uh, my deck is jeskai i previously played jeskai green um uh, another version of the deck I played was called Slushy, which is where I'm playing Chess Guy, but I'm also playing a Breach Combo in the deck. So I think as far as the format goes, you can choose whether you want to be aggro, combo, and just go from there, really. Okay. Just choose your player style, and at the moment, like anything goes, almost. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, what, that's what people like about the format, isn't it? The, var the, the variance, yeah. the variability of it. And uh, with the points as they are, I think they're not very restrictive at the moment. So you can pretty much play a deck that plays a lot of powerful cards in, which I think is another draw to the format. It's it's like Commander. You want to play your most powerful cards, uh, but if you want to do it in a competitive way um, and you want to play 1v1, this is sort of the format I'd uh, push you towards. Nice. Uh, so game three, we've got... Tutor for a doomsday already. Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, tutor for surveil land, which uh, fixes the draw this time, manages to put a card into the bin. Uh, but this is a much slower start from uh, Jeffro, which I guess happens when you don't start on <laughs> double mocks. <laughs> uh, and, and interestingly, birthing ritual being in the bin, I assume, is just not a problem. Like that. That, it's just, it's almost an extension of your hand in these kind of ab Abzan decks, right? Um, I, I imagine there's probably ways of getting the birth and ritual back. Uh, like I said, I don't think it's the main part of the deck. It's just one of the many value cards okay, in see. here. It's not as important as Doomed to Stay or Breach for the other side. Like They are the main wing cons without them. Um, the deck probably doesn't operate. Understood. Whereas the uh, Abzan deck can just beat you down with the creatures, or just outvalue you in other ways as well. Uh, do you get to search up for a creature? So it'll be interesting to see which one we get. 
uh, Renegade Rally. So, like you say, that is a perfect example of a way to get back the birthing ritual. Oh, nice. Yep. <laughs> like, like Jeffrey says, you can fetch like, double fetch, or you can fetch into the birthing ritual, because it is kind of permanent with two mana. Uh, and birthing ritual being nicely two mana. Lovely. This is this is kind of like a toolbox style deck, then, is it? It's just get, yeah, your, get your value. There, there might be cards that deal with things that need to be dealt with. It, it, was, it reminds me of Jund uh, from Modern. From times gone by where every single card in the, the deck is trying to uh two for one your opponent or put yourself in a position where you get to two for one your opponent got you um i like it i like i like the style so here we're gonna see a fetch which is gonna trigger revolt we're probably gonna play the renegade rally which is gonna bring back the birthing ritual and then we're gonna get birthing ritual trigger and we're gonna get to put a four drop into play which uh i imagine if it's something like a siege rhino uh, which is going to uh, have an ETB and uh, just push Jeffro's card advantage or the um, his way of winning the game by putting a big fatty onto the board. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, that's value. Yeah. That's definitely value. Yeah. Yep. So that is the line that we see happen and. Let's see what we hit here off the birthing ritual. It's a very cool play. Got to do some shuffling first. <laughs> yes, uh, one of the issues with Canlander, uh, the fact that all the fetches are legal and all the dual lands are legal, uh, majority of the time is going to be used for shuffling uh, the deck. Yeah, get practicing shuffling 100 cards, because yeah. I haven't done it in a while. <laughs> I got very comfortable shuffling 40 cards. Yeah. Alright, so we got the seven cards, so what what are we gonna? Or less. Or less. Okay. One mana greater or less. <laughs> so, there we go, we get kitchen things which uh has persist, so if that gets set to the birthing ritual it will come back, so there's that's part of the value. So it's a free sack. Um I I am a little worried. If I'm in Jeffro's seat, though, uh, there was an Urbog team of Yogmoth played last turn. Uh, Alice does have access to the triple black. Doesn't go for it. Uh, but looking at the hand, I see a Fabricate and an Enlightened Tutor and a Brain Freeze. So they are all the pieces you need to combo off. So I imagine this game is probably not longed for this world. <laughs> Uh, Leaving much tapped, crew of the guard. So yeah. What are we going to get here then with recruiter? I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> so with with um, this deck being a toolbox deck, there are many options. So grief. There we Ooh, go. That's, that's a good option. Very good option to get. So we're going to see enlightened shooter happen here. So we know there's. So we saw a personal tutor for Doomsday. We saw, I saw a fabricate. I think I saw a brain freeze. So if Alice is concerned about Doomsday being stripped, then we, yeah, this is the alternate combo back to the top of the deck. Then is it? Yeah. So I think you've got to decide here from Jeffro's point of view. Um. Well, it's. Well, I don't know if I'd be taking the Doomsday, knowing there's also a brain freeze. And a fabricate. Interesting. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very difficult decision. I think this is the, the crucial point of this match, isn't it? Yeah, because if you leave the fabricate, the fabricate goes and searches for Black Lotus. You play Black Lotus, you make triple red. You play and do I know maybe you can't combo off with that way. Maybe you can. Yeah, so fabricate I think would be my pick. Staring down Doomsday and we take the fabricate, I like it. So Doomsday doesn't win from this position, it yeah. set up a win. 
but I think the Fabricate can definitely win the game, or potentially win the game there. Um, can it? Maybe it can't with it being three mana. I think you'd be like maybe one mana short. Um, but that is, oh, that's so good, but so bad being tapped out here. <laughs> So yeah, I think we're gonna have to go for it. So we are gonna doomsday. We'll probably see the same pile we saw last time. With the potassium probe to see if the, but the brainstorm clear. brainstorm being crucial, right? Well you can pick it from your graveyard as well. Yeah, no, no what I mean is if the scavenging ooze had mana. Yes. Um I imagine there's other ways to draw multiple cards. Yeah. Um So I Let's hear drawing see. three cards with one mana is quite powerful, though, in Magic the Gathering. Yep, there it is. Uh, Ancestral Recall, I think, currently the highest pointed card in Cantlander is eight points. And I think that, that just shows how how good it is. Um, this is going to be very close. Because Jeffro does have, what is it, five points of damage. And at least three creatures in his bin. So if he's got three green mana, can't he just win here with some activations from Scavenger News and attack for the eight? Does that mean Alice just didn't count? Oh, oh no. Jeffro's missed potential lethal. Oh, wait. No, just recorrect this. Ah, okay. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was close. He's done it. Oof. Well, good, big win there. Uh, I, I suppose going for the Doomsday, that's another reason to leave Doomsday in hand, right? Because the loss of yes. life just yeah, opens that, the door. That made a huge difference. That was an extra eight points of damage, uh, which Jeffrey didn't have access to. Um, and Alice felt like um, they were forced to fire off the Doomsday there to uh, set up the win. Fantastic! Well, that was that was fun. That was fun to watch. So you'll have to come along and give it a try. Thanks again, and catch you all later.